All right, what up nerds? Today we are going to be uh, crafting some dungeon terrain. We'll be crafting our sewer dungeon terrain. We'll make a close up of this very quickly, but today we're just gonna go over the basic components that you're gonna need to craft this, just so you know you don't have to be an advanced builder. Uh, when I made this, all we used today were cardboard. We used some cork. We used a Stanley ruler or what is this called measure. a tape measurer obviously that's why i have her here uh, a tape measurer a ballpoint pen doesn't matter what color it's preferably black but we have blue here it'll still be working out fine i use a army a swiss army knife a bigger deadlier knife one that doesn't look too friendly we also use a couple different paints to make it look good we have some Mod Podge, we have some black paint, some gray paint, dark gray specifically, true green, we have green grass and lily pad green, we have morning sunshine paint, we have brown and white paint, along with aluminum foil ball, some uh, styrofoam plates, so you can get your paint on a plate. Uh, we have some brushes, along with, we have a hot glue gun over here in the corner. With a ton of hot glue. Yeah. A ton of hot glue and a pencil, and that's pretty much it. Over here, we have our water brush station, along with a very, very easy Black Magic Craft by Jeremy. His Black Wash, with the, which is just a touch of dish soap. Uh, and a bunch of old youth paint and water, which is really easy to do. Now this is super expensive if you notice, this is low budget. And you can see how good this stuff looks. Um, obviously the back is just cardboard, really nothing too expensive. Um, and it looks pretty darn good, you know. Uh, we do have another material to make this glossy. That is up to you whether or not you're gonna go out and spend probably another like 10 bucks on the gloss. It might even be cheaper than that. We'll look it up later and put a correction in the video. Um, but this stuff looks super great, especially for just I mean, beginning crafting materials. Nothing too crazy. So we're gonna go ahead and get into the video now. So starting off with the cardboard right now, we are making these dimensions five inches across. The reason why we wanna do that is because we're gonna have enough play room for the players to walk down the sewers and also have that effect of the yeah. and the nastiness going down the center. What we're gonna do is make sure it's five inches. Luckily enough, the cardboard that we have from this little seam down the center is actually, we measured it out and it's actually already five inches on the dot. So we left out right here. Now, if it, yours is a little bit different. Don't worry about it. Just measure out the five inches across, okay? The other measurement you're gonna do is 10 inches, okay? So you're just gonna grab the ballpoint pen. If you don't have a tape measure, a ruler will work out perfectly fine. You're just gonna mark off on both sides. So now I've already got the five inches here. And what you do is I have a cutting board here. If you don't have a cutting board, you can just go outside and find a log or something. If you're really, really hurting, find something that's gonna be easy to cut into so it's not gonna destroy your table. Okay, so be, be mindful about where you're cutting. Okay, so I take my knife, already got a pretty easy layout. I just need to cut down the center of this line. Okay, and you don't have to press too hard because it's cardboard. Do a couple passes of this. Didn't really press too hard, no cuts in the actual board, super easy to do. Now, the nice thing about the cardboard too is if you look really closely, you'll see that there are fine lines going all the way across. These fine lines are super easy to make your cuts a lot more clean. I'm gonna be using life principles from the women of the Bible. We're gonna be using that today to make our cut nice and clean to go from side to side. It's gonna be perfect. Great, now we've got our straight line. We're gonna make a cut down there. Remember, just make a couple easy passes.
Great, so we've got right here, five inch by 10 inch. So this is gonna be our base. If you look right there. So now that you've done your cardboard, five inches by 10 inches right here, what we're gonna do is, we're now gonna make sure we can have a path for the sewers. So if you look really quickly, there is a indentation that goes below where the actual walkway is. This is gonna be the cardboard, okay? So we're not gonna actually go a complete five inch across. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do two inches and we're gonna make them each 10 inches long. So what we got, this is just the styrofoam from the Dollar Tree. I'm telling you, uh, we're in hard times right now. The coronavirus has struck everyone, but in these times, if you really need to go out and spend, I think this was like 60 cents, 60 cents. This stuff is super cheap. It looks really good, especially when we get to the uh, cobblestoning. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna measure out two inches. So we've got our two inches there to there. What you're gonna need to do is get another straight edge. What well, I'm using is two bottles. <laughs> Two bottles to make this straight stretch. Great, now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cut the line down, okay? So just like the cardboard, you don't wanna go just super digging in. You just wanna kinda of lightly just kind of go into it, follow the line the best you can. Oh. Okay, so we've got the two inches. Uh, we've done the entire two inches, so now we're gonna measure out the 10 inches. We've got our 10 inches marked right there. We'll mark it over here now. Got my 10 inches and two inches. So the next step, you've cut out your two, uh, two inch by five inch styrofoam uh, pieces. And now what you're gonna do is, since these things have a, a little peel to it, they have a little bit of a paper edge to it. You can hear it. ASMR right there. Um, what you need to do is you need to peel that off because that stuff is going to ruin your build if you don't peel that off. Make sure you peel it off. You have to. Gosh, peel it off. People say these are easy to peel. I struggle with them so much. They're so hard to peel off for me. I'm just not good. It's probably because I bite my nails, which is bad for me, I know. Let's screw it up with this. We can cut this next part out. Okay. So you peel it off, hopefully better than us, uh, all of the paper from the styrofoam. The next step that you're gonna need to do is since this is for Dungeons and Dragons or Pathfinder or whatever role-playing game or tabletop game you're using, you're gonna need to make sure you have your dimensions blocked out. So for us, we use the one inch uh, block to make sure our miniatures can fit there and they can go across and do whatever they need to, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get out our tape measure, your ruler, whatever you use, you're gonna get that out again. And you're gonna start marking off where the lines need to go. So we're marking our one inch mark here. And one inch mark on the other side. And you're gonna mark down all of your inches on the other side. Great, so when you get that done, all you're gonna do is grab your straight edge, whatever that is. Ours is still the Bible. And we're going to make sure it's straight all the way across for all of these lines.
not absolutely perfect on this side, but it's pretty darn close. And then what you're gonna do is you're just gonna go all the way down. This is the easier one, because you're not like sniping it. Boom, okay, so there you have a pretty, for the most part, clean uh, dimension. This is a little wonky right here, but we can probably smooth that out. So that's your first one, okay? So you do the same thing for this one. I'm gonna let Gabby do that one. Hopefully it's better looking than mine. So now that we've gotten both of our two inch by 10 inch squares, obviously Gabby is a pro, because look at how good this one looks. And I made a little bit of a mistake down there, but that's okay. Um, so the next thing that you need to do is called cobblestoning. Now, there are different kind of rollers you can buy, uh, probably on Amazon or different shops. And if not, uh, what I recommend you do, especially if you're on the cheap end like I am, and the best outlook for how to make your cobblestones look great is you actually have to draw them in. So... If you're really trying to figure out the technique for cobblestoning, uh, you don't want it to be super blocky and super consistent. So a great example is I'm going to go ahead and start here and I'll walk you through how to do this. So I got up in this corner and it's okay if this isn't super perfect up here. What I do is I instantly just go to the center and I just start making oblong shapes. Okay. And maybe I make a big old circle here. Now, the big thing is, and you've heard, if you've ever listened to any crafting channel, they're going to say the same thing. They're going to say, make sure you round out your edges. Because if you don't round out your edges, you're not going to have super good, consistent looking stonework, okay? This is probably not the best one I've ever done, but it's okay. Because as you get going, the more that you do, the better it's going to look, okay? So I've got a lot of them facing this way, so I'm going to start going this way. And it does take a bit of time. Uh, and if you look on this stuff, if you were like super nitty gritty, you'd be like, oh, well, this doesn't look like a super good stone. But if you're not really paying too, too much attention to it, it looks pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and spend, this This does take a long time. This might take me probably 20, probably 10 minutes and 10 minutes, probably 20 minutes per uh, two inch by 10 inch. So I'll be right back. So after you've cut out your dimensions and you've got all your cobblestoning looking just like this, looks pretty good. What you're gonna do now is you're gonna get a ball of aluminum foil. Now this is really cheap. Hopefully you have this in your home. And you're gonna take this and you're gonna roll this over your train. If you look at the train over here, you're gonna notice that there's a little spots where it looks like it dips in and dips out. And you probably can't tell initially from the camera. That's okay, because we're only using our iPhones. No sponsor. Um, what we're going to do is, you're going to take that aluminum foil, and you're just going to roll it over the entire thing you just did. And that's going to give it a whole lot of extra texture. And you're really going to want to get in there. I've already done this um, <laughs> once. It wasn't recorded. Stop. It's okay. We live and we learn. Um, so, you know, you're gonna go over this and you're gonna really push, okay? Um, I'm not gonna push as hard because I've already done this. Great. Now that we've done that, we're gonna move on to hot gluing them. So, before you get to the hot gluing, you probably wanna measure out the distance of two inches away from each side, just to give you a reference point of where you're gonna place these. Great, so we got your hot glue gun. We're using skinny sticks. I recommend using the larger sticks uh, because hot glue is fast and dries quickly. When you've got your hot glue gun, all you're gonna do is spread this all over your, this is why you need a bigger one because the little ones do not give you enough you want to get it all over there. 
because you're going to want, especially if you've got paper on the back, it's going to be a lot harder to get that paper to stick. And you want to move as fast as you can. Make sure you plump it down there. You can move it around while it's still a little hot. Make sure it's really on there. Great, and we're gonna do the same thing to the other side. All right, so you've done your platform right there to walk on. Now you're just gonna take some hot glue and you're just gonna run it down a lot. Down, through, to make a water texture. One thing that you're gonna wanna do is make sure you hot glue the sides of the walkway because we're, if you wanna use the gloss texture, the spray can gloss, at the end, this is gonna protect the sides. There we go, we've got some water texture. So you've done your hot glue madness. Now we're gonna come back over to the cutting board. We need to make sure that we have edges to make sure the players know where the walls are. So what we're using is quark to make sure it goes up. It's only gonna be an inch high, so it's gonna be really easy to measure. So you take your tape measure, your ruler, whatever it is, Measure out an inch. I used to have a yardstick. I used to have a yardstick. That's where I'm at right now. It's okay, because now I have two Bibles. Boom. Okay. So you're just gonna do a nice, easy, cork is very, very fragile, and we're gonna need a way to firm it up. We'll get to that in just a bit. But you're just gonna make a very, a, a lot of light passes through the cork to make sure you're getting a nice, even cut every time. So like three cuts and this thing comes undone. Measure out 10 inches, we're gonna need two of them. And if you wanna straight edge that one, you can. Or you can just one inch apart. You can probably get that pretty close. You just have to be generally high enough that the players can see what's going on. And now what we're going to do is we're going to glue these to the actual piece. So you've got your hot glue gun, you've got your cork. All you're going to do is put it on the very... Make sure... It's enough to make sure it sticks to the board. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna line this up to the side, just like this. You've got the side right here. I'm gonna place it down, right down to the side. Line it up the best you can to the board. Okay, great, so it's done. The next thing we're gonna do for the night before you go to bed, you wanna make sure you get some Mod Podge and some black paint on this thing. That's gonna be the last thing that you do tonight unless you're gonna let it dry for like five or six hours. All right, so what you're gonna do now is you're gonna pour out some Mod Podge on a plate. And then we're going to mix it with some black paint.
And then you're gonna take your brush that you're using and you're gonna stir it up. So you mix it all together. Okay, that looks good. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start painting. So what I'm gonna do is just take some. Now you don't need to put it on too thick. Just take some and then whatever you have there, just brush it back and forth. Now, since the cork board is pretty fragile, I am gonna put a little bit more on this so that way it sticks really well and it hardens it up pretty fast. So on these sides, you wanna give it a generous amount. So now we're gonna move on to this middle part where all this hot glue is. Okay. And that's it. And then you're just going to let that dry for a few hours. And then after that, we'll keep painting. So we're going to go ahead and continue this up in part two. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and like and subscribe and share and comment down below if you think that there's anything that you think we can do to make this better or if there's something that you would like us to make for a future video. The next video that we're thinking about making is the centerpiece. And possibly next video, we're gonna release how to make this centerpiece so that way you can have some epic combat in the sewers. Till then, see you guys later.